Now Brianne Tut from Edrie, Alberta. My name is Brianne Tut. I'm from Edge, Alberta. I'm a long track speed skater and I'll be competing in Sochi in the 1500 meter. Well, I traveled a lot when I was a kid because my dad played hockey. Finland, Switzerland, Austria. So I've been around a lot. But that's why I sound a little different is because I used to speak German. I kind of carried the German accent over. We moved here when I was 11 years old, and I've stayed here ever since. I used to figure skate before, and that was not... I'm not really a girly girl. I like more tomboy sports. After the 2002 Olympics, my aunt saw it on TV, and she's like, you should try this. So then my parents took me out of figure skating, thank goodness, and they put me in speed skating when I was 11. Pretty much when I was 16 is when I made like the junior world team, and that's when it kind of got serious for me. And to make the junior team is basically means you're the best... 21 and under in Canada, and they choose the top five, and then they'll ship you out. My first one was in Poland, so that was the first one I ever got to go to. That's the first time you'll get like a Canada jacket and a Canada suit, so it's a pretty cool experience when you're young. I made the team four more times until I got too old, and then after that, I started making the senior team, so that's really good. But once you're a senior, that's when things get real, because you're never going to go back down to a junior, and you're always going to be racing the best of the best. And that was kind of a big jump because they act, they're so much more intense when you go travel with them and their goals are so much different than when you were younger. Uh, I was at the Calgary Oval. Um, it was a training race, so on Saturday I was doing a practice set on the back straight. And this young kid, he was only 17, comes around and he's young, like he's not used to skating with us. But unfortunately, he had his head down, which is something that you don't typically do. And he came and hit me from behind. I wasn't even moving. It was just kind of like getting hit by a car. Because 50, 60 kilometers an hour kind of hurts. I was convulsing on the ice. And then people are coming trying to like stop me from moving my head because I could have a neck injury, which I did. And coaches are trying to grab my blades because they're really sharp and they're flying all over the place. And then I passed back out. And then when the ambulance went to the hospital, woke back up in the hospital. My family was there, and my brother was there, and I had blood all over my face. And then I learned I had like a broken collarbone, two broken ribs, two fractured vertebrae in my neck, skull fracture, and then they let me out after about three days. So that was nice. And then I came back because I had like a stroke in my face and really bad ringing in my ears. And I also got hearing loss from the crash because I didn't blow my eardrum, but something I fractured a bone in my ear that has to do with hearing. So I'm like semi-deaf in that ear now. My granny, like she came from Edgy to Calgary every day. That's not a fun drive and that's not a cheap drive to do all the time. So it was nice always having them there and like listening to me complain and getting me whatever I wanted. Kind of miss that. It's good that he hit me. Like before, I, obviously I wasn't skating well. I was depressed and I was going to quit. So that would definitely not have led to being on the Olympic team now. If I quit, then somebody hit me, getting the time away, figuring out if that's actually what I want to do, if I actually like it. It was good because it gave me more motivation into this season for sure. So in the 3K, I was the second last pair to go. And the typically last pair is the fastest, which they were. And the girl I was racing, it was a great pair. She was kicking my butt for about five or seven laps, and then two laps to go, I managed to pass her. And the race was okay. Like, it wasn't awesome, it, but it wasn't fast, but the ice was really bad because we tried to mimic the ice that there's going to be in Sochi. Before the season started, the 3K would have been my race. The 1500 was now my best chance to make the Olympic team. I wasn't feeling great. I was so nervous, I was like shaking on the line. 
And I kept trying to tell myself, like, it's okay if you don't make it. But at the same time, I'm like, but this is just fine. So you got to make it. So then it actually turned out to be a bad, like, most race time-wise. But I got third place, and they take four girls. So that, that's the distance that I qualified in. It was the 1,500. It's Russia, and it's the Olympics. So everything is 10 times more expensive than it would be on a normal basis. Davis Automotive Group is sponsoring not me, but my family to go. So that's all the money is going towards their flights, their hotels, their visas. Anything like that is what it's going to be used for. What Davis Automotive Group did is they just helped fund them to go and know that it's okay and just be able to fully enjoy the Olympic experience, which is what I want. Uh, I'd like to thank Davis Automotive Group for offering to sponsor my family and send them to Sochi.